Hello everyone and welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today we're going to be looking at some questions from the VIT Triple E examination uh, and we look at these sample questions from the subject of chemistry and understand how to solve them effectively. So <clears throat> let's start off. The first question for the day is calculate the amount of heat evolved when 500 centimeter cubes of cubic centimeters of 0.1 molar HCl is mixed with 200 cubic centimeters of 0.2 molar NaOH. So um, we have four options. We need to find out which of these is the right option. And uh, to start off, let's write the equation where HCl is mixed with NaOH. So HCl plus NaOH is NaCl plus H2O. This is <clears throat> one of the classic examples of the neutralization reaction. Now you can see that one mole of HCl and one mole of NaOH combine together to form one mole of NaCl and one mole of water. So, um, so one mole of HCl combines with one mole of NaOH. Over here we have the volume <coughs> of HCl given and the molarity of HCl given. We need to find out the number of moles. which will be 500 divided by 1,000 since it's in centimeter cube. Multiply that with molarity. So basically you get 0 0.5 times 0 0.1, which is equal to 0 0.05 moles. So currently, number of moles of HCl is 0 0.05. Now, similarly, if we calculate number of moles of NaOH, it will be, we have 200 cubic centimeters of NaOH. So, um, 200 cubic centimeters, we can write that as 200 divided by 1000, which will give you 0 0.2. Multiply that with the molarity, which is also 0 0.2 which means it's basically 0 0.04. So as you can see, there are 0 0.05 moles of HCl and 0 0.04 moles of NaOH. And so we found that out. Now, if you notice the, the reaction, you can see that one mole of NaOH reacts with one mole of HCl. So according to the equation and also the number of moles that we found out, 0 0.04 moles of NaOH will be neutralized by 0.04 moles of HCl. So basically the limiting reagent is 0.04 moles of NaOH. Now for the neutralization reaction, um, especially for the neutralization of HCl and NaOH, um, the enthalpy of neutralization will be 57.3 um, kilojoules per mole. So this is when we have one mole of NaOH. So right now we have 0 0.04 moles of NaOH. So therefore, the enthalpy of neutralization for this particular reaction, which basically calculates the amount of heat evolved, will be equal to um, 57.3 Multiply that with the number of moles of NaOH and, and HCl being used. So basically, we're looking for the number 0 0.04 because the limiting reagent is 0 0.04 moles of NaOH. So we have to put in the number of moles of the limiting reagent. 
So 57.3 times 0 0.04. Um, when you take the <clears throat> decimal points away, we get 5,730 times 4. So that becomes um, 0, 12, 29. And finally, we get 22,920. So since we replaced uh, two decimal points from both multiples, so therefore the final uh, decimal point that we need to add would be four places to the left. So one, two, three, and four. So basically, um, the enthalpy of neutralization that we get finally, or the amount of heat involved, evolved for this particular reaction with these particular amounts of the reagents would be equal to 2.292 kilojoules. So 2.292 kilojoules turns out to be option C. The other options turn out to be incorrect. Um, a would have been a strong contender. However, that's for one mole of NaOH. So therefore, Option C, 2.292 kilojoules, turns out to be the right option. Now let's move on to another question. <clears throat> Which of the following will be the most effective in the coagulation of ferric hydroxide sol? So basically, we're looking at ferric hydroxide as a colloid. Um, so sol basically is a, co uh, a colloid with solid and liquid phases, which means one part of it would be solid, the other part of it would be liquid. So um, when we look at FeOH3, um, this is basically Fe3+, plus and 3OH-. minus. So um, what we can understand is that ferric hydroxide is a positively charged colloid. Now, we're going to use the Hardy-Schulz rule here. So according to the Hardy-Schulz rule. Now the rule states that the coagulation power of an ion will be directly proportional to the charge of the ion. So this is the Hardy-Schulz rule. Just box that out so that it stays, so that's important. So therefore, when we look at the rule, the rule says the coagulation power is directly proportional to the charge of the ion. Now, we know that FeOH3 is positively charged colloid. Now, that means it requires an anion to coagulate. So basically, among the four options, we need to find out which of these have the greatest negative charge. So potassium is always plus one. That means the charge of cyanide is minus one. Um, sodium is also always plus one because it's a group one element. So that means chlorine will all will be minus one in this in this case. Barium is a group two element, so it has a charge of plus two which means chlorine would have a minus one charge. However, let's look at option A now, Mg3PO42. So um, basically what this means is that magnesium, having a plus two charge because it's of group two, would mean that PO4 would have a charge of minus three. And you can basically guess, guess this because of the crisscross rule, so therefore, since there's three magnesium and two PO4s, 
that means the charge of PO4 would be minus 3 and the charge of magnesium would be plus 2. So as you can see, PO4 3 minus is our highest anion charge. Therefore, option A turns out to be the right option. The most effective of the following in the coagulation of ferric hydroxide would be magnesium phosphate. So the other options are they only have minus one as their anion charge, which basically does not equal the charge of Fe3+. So therefore, the most effective one would be the one with the highest charge of the anion. So therefore, that leaves magnesium phosphate as the right candidate. Now let's look at the final question for this particular episode. You need to identify C in the following reaction. So as you can see, this is a question from organic chemistry. We have an organic compound given with particular reagents. When it reacts with particular reagents, it forms A, B, and C. Um, so C is basically our end product. We need to identify what is this end product. Now, let's look at the organic compound given. This is um, benzene ring with NO2 functional group, which is known as nitrobenzene. Now, when nitrobenzene um, reacts with tin and hydrochloric acid, it undergoes reduction. So reduction is basically when hydrogen is added or oxygen is removed or a mixture of both scenarios. So the product A is basically equal to NH2 because hydrogen is added, oxygen is removed and hydrogen is added to the nitrogen atom. So therefore, nitrobenzene in the presence of tin and HCl would give you NH2, which is product A. NH2 is known as aniline. Now, aniline will now react with NaNO2. So um, usually when NaNO2, uh, when, um, when a phenylamine reacts with NaNO2, they usually react in cold conditions in the presence of a dilute acid. So um, this is what the completed complete um, reagent should look like uh, or the complete uh, scenario should look like. They only said NaNO2, but in actuality, there will be dilute uh, acid, which is HCl under cold conditions. So when aniline reacts with NaNO2HCl under 5 degrees Celsius, um, what you would see is um, product B, which in fact would be a diazonium salt. So N plus, three lines with N, and the Cl minus, since we're having chlorine. So basically, uh, the reaction with NaNO2HCl and at 5 degrees Celsius would, is called diazotization. And the product we have is benzene diazonium chloride. Now, Benzene diazonium chloride in the presence of NaNH2. So, in the presence of NaNH2, benzene uh, diazonium halides return back to becoming aniline, which is NH2. So, therefore, our C product or the product C in this particular set of equations turns out to be option D, aniline. It's not chlorobenzene because chlorobenzene would have a Cl and a benzene group. Benzoic acid um, would have a COOH group. And uh, benzamide would have an N2 group. So therefore, um, all the other options are incorrect. The right option is option D, aniline. So the idea is to solve each equation by itself and using the product of the first equation, um, use that as the 
reactant for the second equation and so on until we reach the required um, product, which in this case is C, which become which we found out to be aniline. So option D again turns out to be the right option. Now that concludes this particular episode of Bitty Questions with Solutions. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Brain Blitz Audios. You can also find so many of our other content uh, on our YouTube channel. You can also hit the bell icon present below the video to re receive the latest notifications from our channel. So until the next webisode, take care, stay safe, bye-bye for now.